in prospect in this leg of the European series. Well, Harama or Jerama is the track around 27 kilometers north of the capital. 19,000 fans have made the short trip, paid good money to see what will be, for most, the last glimpse of the cars that will compete at the Le Mans Classic next month. 21 cars in four classes ready for the off. Weather, well, 23 degrees Celsius, and a chance of rain around 30%. Fingers crossed that, that doesn't happen. And we'll be ready for the usual timed two hours, 45 minutes, and or Bishpani, as you can see. One power. Montoya taking time off from testing to come and visit the circuit here. Well, as for qualifying, it's a familiar look to the front of the grid with Ronaldo Capello and Tom Christensen's Audi R. It's the Joost Audis 1 and 2 with Stefan Johansson and Guy Smith in the wonderful Golf liveried privateer Audi. Then comes Jan Magnussen and David Brabham in the Panos along, or in front of, I should say, Klaus Graf and Frank, say, Klaus Graf and Frank Lagorce also in a panos. Following them is the leader of the LMP 675, the lightweights as far as the big boys are concerned, with Didier de Radic and Eric van der Poel. And close attention to them being paid by Bruno Lambert and Ian McKellar in the Saline, which is leading off the GTS challenge. And then we look further back to find the first of the GTs, which is Frederick Ekblom and Dirk Muller, proving once again that the BMW M3 is more than a match for the Porsches. They're not happy about it. More on that a little bit later. So, waiting for the safety car to move out of the way and allow us to get underway on board with that BMW motorsport car. Porsche claiming it's not properly homologated. The organizers disagree. This car, say BMW, will be available later. And of course, to brace in the GT class, it should be a current available road car. If the car does actually come onto the streets, quite a surprise for those of you who've got enough money to actually spend on it. And inside the golf car, you can see not much use of the clutch. And the reason is paddle shift on this vehicle. Nice and expensive, also extremely handy on this twisty and windy track. A beautiful course indeed. The lap record stood here since 1994. Maybe it'll fall today. We shall see. Confirmation of the grid then. Capello and Christensen leading off Biele and Piro. Then come Johansson and Smith ahead of Guy Magnussen and David Brabham. Klaus Graf and Frank Lagos. And then it's Didier Rodique and Eric van der Poel, followed by the saline of Lambert and McKellar and Hawkins and Goddard leading the Lola in the LMP 675 ahead of the Renault Judd of Dunoch and Graham. Well, a whole host of Porsches at the rear making up most of the GT class as they have done for so many years. And we're looking for a good start. And the safety car is underway. We've gone to green and we are racing in Harama. And a great start, as you'd expect, from the Audis, the most powerful cars in the class. Some say the best vehicles in the world. Heading down to the first corner and the number one Audi is taking it decently. No, he's not. He's drifted wide and the golf car has nudged him and through goes the Panos. And all of a sudden, it's gone terribly wrong for the number one of Rinaldo Capello. He will be absolutely kicking himself for that one. Frank Bieler now leads ahead of Jan Magnussen in the Panos. And Stefan Johansson is in the frame still as well. What a break right at the start, as far as we're concerned. Wonderful racing. So it's Piro Magnussen, followed by Capella Johansson, then the Panos of Graf, the second one, and then the Reynard Judd of Delaridig. And then comes Goddard in the Lola, B to K car. Well, what a start. Nerves perhaps showing, because in Harama, it's known as a track where it's very difficult to overtake, and none of that so far. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And the Panos is finally showing that they've got the medal to compete with the Audis. Finally, have they got that set up? Well, we shall see. For now, though, it's the number two, Frank Bieler, who is leading them, followed by the Panos of Jan Magnussen. And the wonderful golf livery still in there. But there was our leader who is down in third place and will be looking to get back. As you can see, going wide, sneaking on the inside. The Panos closing the door on him and keeping him out. Well, the question is just for how long. The Panos is a slower vehicle and has proved itself to be so far this season. 
They had a better car setup, it seemed, last time around. And on board with Stefan Johansson. And looking at this, and he's through. And the Panos takes some off the gravel. And it's a great move from Capello. He's back into second place with his teammates ahead of him. Stefan Johansson also moving up a place as the Panos of Jan Magnussen goes back to his original starting place. But great drama at the beginning of this race. What a race indeed, right from the off. And everyone's still in it, still clean, which is nice to see. Well, the happiest man of all, Frank Bieler. And it's Emmanuel Piro who's on board for the start of the race. And a look at that move once again. Panos getting a nudge, taking on the gravel, losing momentum and going backwards. Well, the number seven car, Stefan Johansson, he's been desperate to get back at the Audis, the official team Audis, the Jos team, for so long this season and reckoned before this race that this indeed was his best chance They've had a car, of course, that came out of the box, courtesy of Audi. It's effectively their car from last season. And not much testing was available to Stefan Johansson. But he seems to be at least on the speed for the time being. Keeping up very well indeed with what is the number one car, as far as the official team is concerned. And you can see this beautiful looping circuit ups and downs and roundabouts it's just familiar to those of you who attended the donnington meeting same kind of terrain but very different weather conditions we're hoping that the clouds are going to stay away from us clouds certainly in the sky but storms well let's just hope they keep away from us for the remainder of this day there's our leader piro in the lead car And almost a concertina once again. Between second and third so far in this race. And Johansson really does have the measure of the number one car driven by Rinaldo Capello. Well, Piro is leading by three and a half seconds at the time being. Johansson is closing for that second place. He's enjoying the challenge, loves this sport with a passion and prepared to put his money where his mouth is, of course. Great battle in the GTs as well. Number 43, Dirk Muller in the BMW 3 GTRs. And you can see the flames coming out of the side. That caused a difficulty with an over-rich mixture in Donington causing the cars or the engineers to actually come out a couple of times with the extinguishers to stop the vehicles actually burning. So the BMWs are looking very good at the moment, and it's Muller leading teammate JJ Leto, closely followed by the two factory Alex Job Racing Porsches, Randy Probst and Sasha Masson. Well, I'm bored and looking at those BMWs, should these cars become available. BMW promised they will. Porsche said they better had, otherwise they will certainly appeal even more strongly next year. In the GT class, of course, your cars are supposed to be available. Beautiful look at one of the most attractive vehicles on the entire circuit, the LMP 675 of Dick Barber Racing. And nice to see a Eurosport star apparently slapped right bang in the middle of its rather curvaceous derriere. So looking at cars two and three for the time being. Incidentally, the Dick Barber, Reynard Judds, leads that 675 class, the number five car. That's with Stefan Johansson and that gap apparently getting all the closer. And a look at the rankings. Piero Capello, Johansson, Magnussen, Graf, the Panos is still there, but drifting, it seems. And trouble.
And that looks like the end, it has to be said. Reynard Judd driven by John Graham. And it looks like a completely blown engine, engine failure, and off he pops. So Johansson yeah, with a fabulous move to swap places with Capello. Capello is not having the best of days. Piro still our leader, but now the wonderful colours so well known throughout racing circles in the 60s and the 70s. Remember the Le Mans Porsches and of course the Ford GT40s which carried those famous colours. Golf always like to bet, if you like, on a privateer and they've chosen well and looking down, trying to find a way through. But for the time being, Stefan Johansson holding him off and a brace of Panos, the meanest looking car on the circuit. Some say it's a bit like an apple pie where you've just laid on the top pastry and it's molded to all the bits of fruit underneath. Well, some think it's beautiful, others hideously ugly. Draw your own opinion, it's certainly a mean machine. Engine up front and all over, sad to say, for the 57 car, Dick Barber Racing and the Mika Duno and John Graham. Well, they can just get back in the stands and try as best they can to enjoy this. So Piro still leads, but Johansson has closed the gap now from 6.5 to 4.8 seconds, doing the job that he did so well to take second place and trying to close down at the leader. And into the pits. Comes the 50 car. Jan Magnussen. And it's a stop-go penalty. And overtaking under yellow. While the marshals were dealing and towing away the car with the blown engine. And a sensation, it's Piro has been called in also for the same penalty and he's going to lose the lead, which means that the privateer and that beautiful livery is going to be seen at the head of the field. Well, disaster for the Joost Audis. Must come fully to a stop and go. And looks like a problem. He's finally kept it, thank goodness. Of course... Always a danger of cooking clutches and brakes. Well, perhaps at this early part of the race, but nonetheless, looked a bit shaky getting away, and they have been known to stall the Audis, as those of you who watched earlier in the season have witnessed. Well, the penalties just keep falling, don't they? And the 51 Panas, Klaus Graf and Frank Lagorsi, the same. Stay with us, we'll be back very shortly. But the news is that Stefan Johansson in the privateer Gulf Oil Audi is leading here in Harama. Stay with us. And you join us with Stefan Johansson, the privateer, with lots of cash, who managed to buy himself an out-of-the-box Audi from 2000 and has had some time to tweak it and is now leading one of the race series, a position he has been desperate to achieve. One of the Panas coming in. Taking on fuel, and you can see that the fuel filter on these machines, or the fuel tank, is in front of the driver, and extra care being taken by the fuel guy. I've actually seen fuel spill into these vehicles before and slosh around inside the car. I think it's a pretty quick exit for the driver. When that happens, you can be sure. Nobody allowed to touch the vehicle in this series until the fuel line man is clear. He's done, and the wheels are being changed. Well, 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 Stefan Johansson, pleased as punch to be leading this one, and coming up onto some of the back markers, number 41, Saline, Lambert McKellar. 
and the big boys of course have to be careful that they don't hamper the slower classes they can be called in for a stop go if they do and question marks about the exits not at all nice and clean number 50 back on track and the 41 saline untroubled our leader Johansson leading the GTs I can tell you is Dirk Muller in the 43 car ahead of the number one team leader JJ Leto and practice problems for Leto meant that he had difficulty with setup but it's setup that is exactly the thing that Stefan Johansson has got right thankfully at long last he was handed the keys and the car at the beginning of the season and then had to find out all about it and spent the last couple of rounds of course Sebring in the United States which is the European Le Mans series opener and then Donington Park getting the car tweaked and he seems to have found the balance absolutely perfectly well on board with the chasing car and the man who led us off also briefly Fernando Cabello closing down now on Johansson and swiftly past the 60 car the Porsche of Jules and a Robin Little and you can just see the sort of stresses that the drivers are under no Lexus 400 class here the ride is rough, but swift as anything on earth, near enough. So the number one Audi chasing down our leader. And closing the gap, it seems. Dero Deek still leads the 675 class, Dick Barber Racing. Dick Barber cars, you can see just one air intake on the top, unlike the larger vehicles. One is all they're allowed. Dick Barber saying that uh, the lighter vehicles do have their advantages. You can see one in the middle of the screen there. And that's the lightness, especially in the Le Mans 24 hours. Could well, results in a victory, well, he claims, saying that better fuel consumption means that they can outstay or stay out of the pits longer than the bigger cars. It would have been nice to see one of the minnows coming through and doing well. Doing well here, though. Currently fifth place overall. And although the larger vehicles do bully their way through, should they stop for mechanical problems in the great race itself, which is, of course, in the middle of next month, then coupled with the fuel consumption, the lighter vehicles could well make hay and come through. MG certainly hoping, oh dear, oh dear. And just look how soft that gravel trap is. Soft enough to stop him going into the wall, thank goodness. But causing all sorts of problems as far as pushing it back out is concerned. It looks stuck for good, does it not? Flat bedded as well, these cars, so almost sticking like glue. Not a happy day once again for the Panos vehicles. Looks so dramatic, but their progress not up to the standard that they would like. Number 50 coming in. And it's to be yet another stop go for passing under yellow. And look at the debris coming off his partner car. Suspension troubles, we're told. It's not surprising. Just like on the beach, sandy bits get where they shouldn't be. And it's affected the front end of the car. Fifty-one car, not a happy vehicle. 
Now you can see the heat haze. Wonderful to see, isn't it, after such a long and miserable winter. Now that's stop-go penalty being imposed. On board with Capello. And coming up to traffic. And not working as well and giving a, a brief farewell, I think we'll be kind enough to say that. Certainly not working as well as Stefan Johansson, who picked his moment to pass beautifully. But just look at the difference between these two cars now. It really is closing this gap. A real battle. Let's hope it stays clean. Fancy having that bearing down on you. Great racing. Well, if you had to choose a dinky toy, surely it would be Stefan Johansson's car. Although the Eurost Audis, by far and away the more powerful machines, or at least the better setup, it seems, for the beginning part of this season. Stefan Johansson has definitely closed the gap, but uh, if you had to put money on it, you'd say that the factory works team probably had the best shot of it. We saw in Donington Park that when uh, Johansson came in, his team not quite as slick as the works team, as you'd expect. Oh, will they ever learn? Another pit stop for Paros number 50. Passing under yellow. And traffic yet again hampering the progress of the number one Audi. Finally through. Now he just has to go one better, but the man in front of him is dominating this race. And you can see on board with Capello, the task at hand. Johansson squirting away from him, and the concertina up around the curves. Beautiful circuit, this. With the leader. Coming around Ascari, down towards Portago. And smoke and perhaps oil spewing. And the leading GTS car, the Salina, Ian McKellar. Smoking badly, that oil could well cause a problem if any of it has got onto the rubber of the number one Audi. It's going to hamper his progress in the battle for the front place. Jansen still looking comfortable, but complacency must not sleep seep into his mind here. It's a wonderful position to be out in front, and uh, he daren't let himself think about the excitement of his position. And as you can see, he is slowing, or at least being caught, by the man who is determined to catch him. Indo Capello. His nerves are a little calmer now. Blood rushed to his head, you can be sure, after that first lap saw his challenge apparently fading and he's right back in it look at this and that damaged car the smoking one coming in Mikella bringing you have the sailing and we're hearing that it's a retirement which is sad it's a beautiful road car available should you fancy one as well it's on display at Donington Park in silver with a beautiful Hide interior. And you probably cost you almost as much as Stefan Johansson paid for this vehicle. Well, Stefan Johansson, of course, is ably assisted by Guy Smith, the boy from Hull in England. And Guy Smith 
There was a question mark as to whether he was just uh, holding back, not wanting to be the first to dint the new car. Uh, indeed, thankfully, Stefan Johansson did the courtesy of uh, doing just that first. And it meant that Guy now can really throw the hammer down, knowing that uh, should he bend the car, at least he was the first to ruin the boss's new toy. So looking through the positions, it's Johansson ahead of Capello, then comes Piero. De Rodic in the 675, leading Goddard in that class, heading the GTS, Mikela, Sela. Mikela, of course, on the way out, so Celia will have moved up. Dirk Muller in the BMs, ahead of Leto. The Palace of Magnussen now down in the 12th place. Poor old Graf with his remodeled front-end suspension. He's currently 20th, sad indeed. So into the pits comes the number one Audi. First scheduled pit stop. And he's going to stay in the car, double stinting. Everybody, the marshals watching, fuel's going in. Wheels are ready. In the meantime, Johansson is trying to put as much space between himself and that vehicle as he possibly can. Well, here, a question of fuel economy. Did the older car run slightly better than this one? Wheels are off. The auto jack's in place. The pneumatic onboard system is at the rear. The man is ready to release it. As soon as the air jacks are done, down it goes, ready to go. And another slow start. Well, overheating and stalling, thankfully saved it. The limiter's on, you can see the flashing lights, they're off now. Speed restrictions, of course, in the pit lane, otherwise it's another stop go for you. Nobody wants that. These Audis, they run so beautifully. All electronic aids used to the full. Well, Capello rejoining, but almost a lap behind. We just saw in the rear, the Golf livery, not quite a lap down, but he's got an awful lot of work to do to unwind that one. Of course, he'll have his chance when Johansson pits. But look at this, this is a man on a mission. Well, Stephen Johansson determined not to let him out of his sight. He has to pick his moment, of course, to come in and doesn't want to get tangled in traffic, so wants to stay as close as he possibly can in order to reduce the risk of problems on his exit. So there, confirmation, Johansson leading Capello, then comes Pira, Deradig, and Goddard. Seiler, Dirk Muller, Leto, Masson, and Probst. They are your top ten for the time being. And you do have to look a long way down to find the Panos. Magnussen there. Moved up a little, but Graf stuck in position 20 and a good few laps down. So the number two Audi getting in on the act. And into the pits comes Stefan Johansson. We'll be back after this short break see whereabouts he comes out stay with us welcome back to harama and we're just looking at the number two audi emmanuel piro about to hand over to frank Biela. t-class dirk muller continues to lead but the real interest of course is johansson and dino capello threw in a flyer as johansson went in for his pit stop but i can tell you that johansson emerged as remaining the leader and looking further back, and the Porsche still playing catch-up to those BMs. 
and something of a problem for the 66 car. Adam Simmons, Temi Rymet, Steve Watson getting very much sideways. The Harlow Racing Team Porsche. And limping back to the pits, we hear. Flat rear. The Panos team still playing catch up. Perhaps the best they can hope for is a top five finish today. Certainly gunning for pride as well they might. A beautiful vehicle in my opinion. And it would be nice to see them after all their troubles today and indeed earlier in the season to come back into it. Klaus Graf on board the 51 car. Refashioned front end. still leading it's Johansson no it's not Johansson has made a mistake he's in the gravel and will he be able to drive out and hold on to that lead no he's lost it well what a terrible shape a momentary loss of concentration and just look at the amount of debris he picked up in the gravel trap there loads of it still spinning off the car those wheels will be like studded tires winter tires almost full of gravel and he now oh goodness me his race well not over but what what an error to come at this time he will be absolutely kicking himself well what a terrible terrible shame that was Just a momentary lapse of concentration. So difficult, of course, easier when you're chasing somebody down to keep your line and the attention of the number two Audi now as well. He could go further behind. Capello then is our new leader in the number one Audi. And indeed, it's official works team Audis one and two as poor old Stefan Johansson pays the ultimate price for doziness. Sure, he wouldn't mind me using that word. Oh, I'm sure he would actually. <laughs> Thinking about it. Oh dear, dear, dear. Well, it's my disappointment as well as his that's uh, coming out. And into the pits he comes. And we're hearing he's got a problem with his brakes. And presumably gravel, perhaps getting in between the calipers. We just don't know. The Swede limping back. Well, what a shame indeed. And through the heat haze, changes will be made. And it's to be Guy Smith that will take over. Well, it's at moments like this that uh, your thoughts go to the pit men. These are the boys that have to work for you. What on earth is the problem? Soon we will find out. And in comes the number one leader Audi. A change as well. Smith still waiting in the golf cart. You can hear work going on and Christensen finally getting his turn Tom Christensen taking over and a long long wait for Guy Smith what a shame for this team the year Audis, of course, will be heading back over the pond to contest the American Le Mans series. And the times that Johansson will have a chance to have a crack at them, few and bar, far between, and this was a real chance for him. And the Audis, well, their team all smiles in the pit lane, as well they might be. So 
Audi's official works one and two. And the Reynard number five is now in third place and another spin. It's the 23 Porsche running second in the GT class behind the 43 BMW of Freddie Ekstrom and getting into a spin. Lucas Lure trying to set himself up for the S, locking up and goodness me, see the front wheel there buckling on the curb and you can see the bodywork slightly awry. BMW Motorsports. Those smiles from those cheeks, they're just being pushed up by the helmet padding. It would be smiling, be sure, if the helmet was off. Well, further there behind, the number five car. It does look great, doesn't it? You can almost do the shopping in that vehicle with pride. Being passed. Now the traffic moving over for the big boy. Tom Christensen then. In the number one car. And finding his path between Ekblom and Eric van der Poel in that number five. problems for the number 23 car after his spin that's front suspension broken just as we thought after the smack against the curving and we expect a long job here you can see the steering snicking backwards and forwards you're not sure just how much is coming well, how much traction is uh, on that front right? Meanwhile, it's party time for BMW. Ekblom perhaps heading for his maiden victory for BMW after three rounds. Leading the GT category. Fifth place overall. And ahead of his teammates. What a nice position to be in. Well, if you ever do get a chance to buy a uh, BMW V8, good luck to you. It looks very twitchy, but a fabulous vehicle. Bela Christensen, Van der Poel, Smith, and Saldana leading now, and on 69 laps, it's Ekblom, Dirk Muller, Collar, Lure, and Brun. Bieler is pitting for fuel. I can tell you, which means that number one Christensen is heading for another victory, apparently. It will be his third of the year. Because unlike Capello, he was not in the winning card, Sebring, of course. The Audi team have now not been beaten, should they go on to win, since the wet in Nürburgring almost a year ago. Well, far from being disheartening for the rest of the pack, they all like to see the big money and the big names in, as well they might. It's great for the sport to see such vehicles on display, and you can bet that they will be challenging way up there when we go to Le Mans. Stay with us, we'll be back in just a few moments. It's a short break. And Chris is about to pass a car we've not seen much of here. The Lola B2K40, driven by veteran Spanish driver Thomas Saldana. Car second place in the 675 class, but over 10 laps behind car number five, which leads that class ninth overall car five Didier Rod uh, Radique and Eric van der Poel Dick Barber racing machine that we've spoken so much about today words though hardly necessary when it comes to describing the dominance of the Audis so far this season 
just a wholly superior setup and a wholly superior machine. Well, those who are perhaps a little downhearted, such as Panos, about the, the way these teams lead, and you can see the leaderboard there in the top of your screen. Van der Poel and the LMP 675 in third place. Leading the GTs, it's Ekblom for the time being, the GTS. It's Brun in the Saline. Yes, the rest shouldn't be too downhearted because this Audi team is regarded by many as being the greatest ever in this form of racing. Just so efficient, and the vehicle is just so phenomenally superior within all the rules and all the regulations. They've just found a space to make what is effectively the purest definition of a road rocket. Well, Christensen passing the two yellow PK Porsches. It's a 10th and 11th for the time being. And Ekblom still leads in the GT class with that nifty little V8 BMW. Leading from his teammates in the 42 car, driven by Jörg Buller. Now 15 seconds between those two vehicles. Number 22 Porsche with Collard now driving further behind. A few raised eyebrows about the BMW V8, as we've documented for you here. But BM do promise that this car will be available for road users. How many is not yet known. Even if it's just one, you've got your chance, should you win the lottery. So Christensen continues on his way without problems. It's been a terrible day for Panos, and they're about to get lapped here. A little snick, just catching the vehicle beautifully. Looping down and up over the top towards Ascari. Uphill and downdale. A wonderful track and it's the 60 car. Robin Little and a broken drive shaft, we understand. And what a shape. Tenth place he was in after an excellent drive. But the number one car almost has, apparently, a racetrack to himself. Certainly in a class of his own, within his own class. And the clock ticking away, it's nearly all up. We've done 113 laps, there's one more being called, and then it'll all be over. Well, it's been a fascinating race here. The lead changing several times, which is wonderful for, to see at this level within this sport. Stefan Johansson, well, his day will perhaps come another time, but it's another chance lost to take on the Works Audis and bloody their nose. It's been a supreme performance yet again. And the number one Audi with its golden trim. Coming in after what will be 114 laps in all. Lights on. Doesn't want to mess it up now in traffic. Confirmation. Time is out. And it'll be a 114 lap race. 
and the lights are flashing and the flag is out and victory once again and a quick flat on the accelerator just to send out a bit of smoke just in case you thought the engine had blown not a bit of it you can't do donuts in these vehicles when others are still <laughs> just slick for position on the final lap but as good a celebration as any and a fabulous result for the number five vehicle the dick barber as well finishing behind this man frank beeler Joost audi's one and two Eric van der Poel bringing home the Dick Barber machine, the Reynard Judd 01Q. Fantastic performance for them and great to see them on the podium. Then we look back for Stefan Johansson's machine and he will finish nine laps down the Reynard Judd, six laps adrift. Leading in the GTs, Freddy Ekblom, maiden victory for BMW and they will finish five and six overall, winning that GT class ahead of the Porsche of Randy Probst and Emmanuel Collard bringing them in. And as for the GTS, well, it's Franz Conrad and the Saline S7R. So hands waving all round. <laughs> and even from the 52 car, six in the GT class. Well, let him have his celebrations, at least. It's a bit like being a backing singer for David Bowie and waving at the crowd. I've seen that before. There we have it, then. Our winner. A red-gloved, clasped hand, clasped in victory. And a beautiful race for us to watch. We had their moments, did Audi. They could have thrown it away, but their concentration never wavered, and they've come home for yet another victory. They just cannot stop winning, can they? Well, you probably can't get a bet on Audi to win in Le Mans. Their cars have been ultra-reliable, but for those stalls on refueling, it seems that the mechanics are robust enough to actually take it. In they come, then. And ready for the warmest of welcomes. The officials will be checking these vehicles, of course, scrutineering. But they've been clean as a whistle to now. How they finished. Tom Christensen, after 114 laps when the flag was thrown, taking it ahead of Frank Beeler's car. And then Eric van der Poel also on the podium in the LMP 675. The GT is taken by Frederick Ekblom and the GTS by Franz Conrad. And our thoughts, of course, with the Panos team and, of course, with Stefan Johansson, who failed to make it to the podium after leading for so long in this race and looking like a privateer who was going to get the better of the big boys.